One of the biggest news stories of 2023 occurred in the waning hours of last year. In the early morning hours of December 27th, crews from the con- removed the Confederate statue plaques and pedestal from the Women of the Southland Monument in Jacksonville's Springfield Park. They also covered the engraved dates of the Civil War. The move came after years of demands to dismantle the monument, which was constructed at the height of the racist Jim Crow era. Our own Will Brown, race and poverty reporter with Jacksonville Today, sat down with Mayor Donna Deegan to discuss her decision to finally take him down. Mayor Deegan, thank you so much for joining us uh, to discuss the removal of the Confederate monument off of public property. Why now at this point? Well, this was always a priority for me. I talked about it all during the campaign. I talked about it all during our 14 community conversations. And uh, I spent a lot of time trying to determine if there was any interest from council to take this up right now. There really wasn't, and and I get that. Uh, But uh, once I learned that there was a possibility of being able to do this myself with private funds, I went to the general counsel and said, can we do this? And he said, yes, you have the executive power to do that. And then it was just a matter of putting the logistics in place. So the bottom line is we've been looking at possibilities here for a long time, and it wasn't until just recently that we were able to get it all together. Walk me through some of those logistics in terms of getting this monument removed from public property uh, because it, it took place on really the first working day after the Christmas holiday. Yeah, well, first of all, let me just say that, that there, there was no undercover of darkness. Uh, we moved, the, we moved the, the, the equipment into place the day before, and, and then the crews got set up a couple hours before dawn and removed both statues in full daylight. They had told us they thought it might take the entire day to get them down, uh, which fortunately it didn't. Uh, but the goal was to be able to do this uh, in a timely fashion we knew it would be a quiet week. The city was open for safety reasons. We thought that was good, but we did want it to take place during daylight hours. We thought that was important too. So uh, I think all things considered, this seemed like a really good week to get it done. And the legislative session starts in early January. There's obviously been a bill filed by a local legislator, uh, Dean Black, who is obviously uh, the chair of the Republican, the local Republican Party. But did his bill prompt have any time? To- impact on the timeline for when this would be removed? No, it literally was simply that this was when we could get it done. Uh, I have said before that I I think that proposal, if it goes anywhere, is is on its face unconstitutional. So I'm not overly concerned about that legislation. But at the end of the day, as I said a couple of weeks ago, I can't allow what other people are doing to determine the timing of what I'm planning to do because I'm just trying to do the next right thing. And we only have a limited amount of time here to get things done. What do you think will happen to the statue now that it is off public property? Well, right now it's just going into storage. It's been crated up. It's been covered. It's going to be very safe. uh, And that will take community conversation and conversation with council. If council would like to deal with, with where we would like those statues to go, they can stay stored for as long as they need to stay stored. They're safe. Uh, but if the community would like a conversation about moving them or, or next steps there, we're happy to have that. Um, right now, I'm just hoping that uh, we can find some unifying purpose in that park and, and to have a conversation about what we can do in Springfield Park that will make everybody feel valued in this community. For me, it was very important as a fifth generation native uh, to the city to, to make sure that everyone in this city, especially this historically black neighborhood, uh, felt included in the promises of this city. And, and it, that was not going to happen while that monument stood in the middle of that neighborhood. This needed to happen. The, the business community told us it needed to happen. Civic leaders told us it needed to happen. Uh, a lot of them have already come out in support of, of this decision. But I'm, I'm very proud of our city today because I think we've taken a step uh, toward uh, being that city that we all desire to be. And that's one that is unified. What, if any, blowback do you expect? Well, look, this has been a divisive issue. It's, I think public polling on it is pretty much equally divided, but you can't make decisions based on, on those things. You have to do what you think is the right thing. So I'm not suggesting there won't be anybody that's unhappy with this. I'm sure there will be some. But I think that, that for those of us who are very much more focused on bringing this community together than we are on dividing it for political gain, um, those of us that really want that are going to work together to to move this city forward in a way that that includes everybody. And I think that's why this was so important. I think it's important for 
um, bringing businesses to Jacksonville. I think it's important for bringing uh, people who want to move here to Jacksonville to say, hey, we're not fighting the Civil War here anymore. This was in no way an attempt to erase history. This was an attempt to learn from history and to show that we can build from that and to do the right thing by each other. If you, if you know better, you do better. And that's one of the things that I said to one of the folks that, that came to, to one of my community meetings that said, you're, 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 you're disrespecting my, my ancestors. And I said, not at all. What I'm hopeful of is that, is that now that we see that, that we erred in that way, that we can now build together a better community. And that's what this is about, is to say, we know better, let's do better. And the fact that we're behind other people, I think just speaks to the divisiveness of this issue and the fact that a lot of people don't like to tackle divisive political issues. I don't really have um, a hesitation to do that. This is the one and only political job I ever plan to seek, and I'm going to do everything I can to move this city in the most positive direction that I can for as long as people want me here. So many people in 2023 have said uh, hate doesn't belong here. We're not a hateful city, whether it was MLK breakfast, whether it was anti-Semitic things that were put placed on people's doorsteps in the springtime, whether it was we on and on and on Nazi symbols, the, the shooting in Grand Park. We right. can go on and on. But yeah. my point being is so many people have said hate does not belong here. This is not who we are. So who are we as Jacksonville? Well, I've described us as a beautiful mosaic, and that's really how I see our city. What I love so much about Jacksonville is that you go neighborhood to neighborhood, and people can say they're disjointed, but I don't think that's true. I think you go neighborhood to neighborhood, and you see this rich tapestry of, of community that's just very different, but also what we can all gain from. And I think most people really want that and see it that way. That's why so many people look to Jacksonville as a bellwether for so many things, because we do have so many different communities here. And I think that's wonderful. I think we need to embrace that. And I, I love the fact that most people do. Of the major cities in the state of Florida, uh, Jacksonville has the most history. Uh, we're considerably older than Tampa and Orlando and Miami. Do you think of today of this removal as a living history of sorts uh, in terms of his, making history in Jacksonville? Well, I, I certainly do think it's a, a his, historic moment for our city. Um, I wish it had come sooner. I'm glad that we were able to get it done. But I think, again, it's just another step on the path. It's just like with the MLK breakfast and bringing people together again for that. I think it's a step on the path. If we don't follow this with, with great community conversations and the ability to have difficult discussions about the things that divide us, it's only a step and, and, and it doesn't go further than that. But I think it was an important step because I think that, that symbols are incredibly important because they tell people who we are, who, who we're saying we are and who we want to be. So to me, this was a symbol that needed to change. In terms of symbols changing, is it something that, do you believe the symbols have a place on private property? Well, look, I, you can't tell people what to do on their private property. But at the end of the day, I do think that, especially this monument, because it sat nestled in the middle of a black neighborhood, it, and it was just, to me, such an injury to be in the middle of that neighborhood. That, more than anything else, to me, was was an important part of removing this. Now, the conversations will continue is in terms of, of where, if anywhere, this should go. Um, it may be that there's a place for it on private property, if that's a museum or some other place that, that, that makes sense. Um, but those will be discussions that we have to have as a community and perhaps with the city council. I'm not saying that there's not a, a historical place to put these, these artifacts or whatever we want to call them of our history. I just think in the middle of a, of a black neighborhood is not one of those places. It was funded through completely private funding. That's right. Um, walk, walk me through just making sure that it was private dollars, not taxpayer dollars that were used to remove this monument. Well, when we set aside the $500,000 in the CIP, um, there were strings attached to that. If I was going to use that money, that had to go through council. There was really not any political will from the council right now to take up that issue. And we thought, how long can we kick the can down the road on this? Will we ever get there? So I started to explore other ways to fund and, and uh, had 
ongoing conversations with 90 Forward, also with the Jesse Ball DuPont Fund. There were some private donors that were interested in getting involved. Uh, so then I went to general counsel's office and said, if I were able to raise these private funds, do I have the executive authority to remove this monument? And he said, absolutely, under the separation of powers, because you're not uh, having to go to city council and ask for these funds, you absolutely have the executive authority to take down this monument. And so that became the conversation, and we were able to raise those funds. And, and it was a contract between 90 Forward uh, and ACON to, to get that done. So the $187,000 that was considerably less than the 500000 that was set aside by the city council, that price tag um, is surprisingly low to a number of people. Why did it cost so little, considering how much the city council set aside? Well, remember, uh, what we did is we removed the two statues. Uh, the large structure uh, that held those statues is still there. That would have taken a great deal of money to bring down. Uh, we didn't have that kind of money. So, so when, when Mayor Curry was considering this same thing, when he was looking at taking down the whole thing, that $1.3 million figure is really not far off. Instead, we decided to cover uh, the wording on that, just that stand, if, bandstand, whatever we want to call it, the, the, the structure that held the monument, um, and leave it there in hopes that we could either repurpose it or if council decides it wants to spend the money to, to move it or if somebody else wants to you know raise the money to move it, whatever, we can have those discussions. Um, but for now, that remains, and that was, the, that was the piece that was so expensive. As we head into 2024, uh, so much happened from a racial perspective in Jacksonville in 2023. What other areas of racial reconciliation or do you think are on the horizon in Jacksonville for next year? Well, I'm, I'm very excited about uh, the MLK celebration. I'm excited about the fact that we're having one celebration for the entire city. I think that's a very unifying um, opportunity. But again, um, I'll, I'll say the same thing that, that Isaiah Rumlin said the day that we kicked that off. This is great if indeed we build from it. And I think that always has to be our goal as a community. Let's continue to take those steps toward unity. So I think I'm hopeful that we'll follow that up with more community conversations. I'm hopeful that we'll follow that up with, um, I, I want to continue to do that work with 90 Forward and with others who are trying to do that work of racial healing. And I think those things are incredibly important. Mayor Deegan, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. That was Jacksonville Today reporter Will Brown talking to Mayor Donna Deegan. The city council will actually meet today at two o'clock to ask the city's attorney about that statue removal.